Okay, so now that I've introduced you to the concept of event handlers, how do we implement them in Java? Right now, we already have our event source, which would be our J button. So how do we specify the event that we want to listen for? Within the context of Java, a click on a button can be referred to as an action. So from this point onward, when I say the word action, I will be using it to mean click. But do know that an action can also represent other things. For example, when a user presses enter in a text field, Java also refers to that as an action. So how do we make our program respond to an action on a button? In other words, how do we make it respond to a click? Since we already have our event source, we now need to create a listener object. But we can't just create any object. An object that listens for an action must implement an interface known as the action listener interface. I'll discuss what interfaces are in another lesson. For now, I'll just show you the things that you need to do in order to use the action listener interface. But I won't go into any details about what interfaces actually are. So before we can start, we'll need to import two things, the action listener interface and the action event class. So let's go back up here where our import statements are and let's type import java.awt.event dot action listener and import java dot awt dot event dot action event. In this example, we won't actually be making use of the action event class, but we are still going to need to import it. Otherwise, we'll get an error later on. Okay, so now that we have these imported, we can create the action listener object. Let's create another method for that. I'll type public void set up button listeners. And we will put the relevant code regarding the button listeners in here. First, let's create a variable for the action listener object. The data type of this object will be action listener and let's name it button listener. And then type the equal sign and then say new action listener followed by parentheses and then curly braces. I'll put the open curly brace here and then I'll put the closing curly brace down below because I need to type a few more things in here. And then I'll put a semicolon at the end. Please do not forget this. Usually we do not put semicolons after curly braces, but in this case we have to. Okay, so what is this block of code here? What I'm doing is I am creating an object without having to define another class in a separate file. That's something that you can do in Java, and it can be pretty useful if you don't need the object to have too many fields or methods. That way you can just quickly write it without having to bother with all of the other things that you have to type when creating an actual separate class file. So this is our listener object. When it hears that the button has been clicked, we want it to initiate a specific response, which is to print the word click in the command line window. So how do we specify a response? We do that by writing some stuff here inside the curly braces of our action listener. We'll need to override a method known as the action performed method. When I say override, what this means is to define an already provided method, which in this case is the action performed method, and give it our own implementation. In other words, we'll put our own specific code inside the method body. So first, we type at override, 
and then we say public void action performed and then in parentheses action event AE and then curly braces. We have to type the method signature exactly as you see here. It's case sensitive. The only thing we can change here is the parameter name. You can name it just E or X or something else, but everything else has to be the same. And then inside the method body, we would type the instructions for what we would like to happen when the button is actually clicked. So here, let's type system.out.println click. So now we have our listener object and the response that it triggers. The next thing we need to do is register this listener object to the button object so that it actually knows what to listen for. So here, right below our button listener, we will type button, which is the name of our J button, followed by dot add action listener. Since it's an action listener that we want to add. And then in the parentheses, we say button listener which is the name of our action listener object. And that completes the event handler code. Let's make sure that we actually execute all this code by calling our set up button listeners method back here in the GUI tester class. Let's type gd.setUpButtonListeners. And then Let's say that. Okay, so before we test this, let's go back to GUI demo and let's do a recap of the things that we just did. We created a button which serves as the event source. And then we created a listener object that serves as an event listener. This listener object listens for an action to happen since it's an action listener object. We've specified a response by overriding the required method action performed. We just specified a simple print statement. And then we registered the button listener to the button using the appropriate method add action listener. So when an action is performed on the button, then we print out a message. Okay, so let's compile this. And then let's run it. So here's our J frame with the button. And then every time we click on it, it says click in the output window. So that's it. So much code just for this very simple example, but that's Java for you. <laughs> in the upcoming videos, we will do more examples. Thanks for watching.